let's just begin. I think they would, they should, you know, join in between. So, uh, Sruti, can you please tell me about yourself? Like, you know, when did you purchase the sessions? What is the status as of now? Or things like that. And of course, where, where are you from? What do you do as well? Well, uh, I done graduation this okay. year. Okay. Like BCom or anything else? <clears throat> BCom, right? BCom. Yeah. Okay. So are you like a full-time student as of now or are you working? Child, so actually, I'm uh, full-time student. Full-time student. Okay, great. And where are you based out of? Oh, Delhi. Delhi. Okay, great. Uh, good to uh, know that, Shruti. And when did you purchase the session? And, uh, you know, uh, how much have you progressed on it? Like, have you watched all the video lectures or have you watched, watched all the, uh, you know, revision questions, etc.? Or where are you as of now? Can you just uh, let me know about that? Uh, so, no, I, I uh, start, um, I already see all your videos and okay. revision lectures last time. Oh, you've completed it. Okay, great. That's, that's good to know. Uh, okay. So this is basically uh, an orientation session where we explain, you know, things about the, you know, the syllabus, the exam structure, like what is the time strategy that you need to adopt when it comes to the, uh, you know, PM exam in December. You're attempting in December, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we will be discussing those things primarily. And secondly, the next aspect that I will be discussing is, you know, how to go about it from now on. Because we are standing on the 1st of October as of now, and the exam is in December, right? So till that date, what all things should we do? Or how should we plan, uh, you know, the next few, uh, you know, months that we have uh, appropriately or in an efficient manner? That's basically something that I will be discussing as well. So uh, I hope you're only attempting this particular paper, right? Uh, or are you attempting any other paper as well in December? No, sir, PM paper. Just PM. Okay, great. And is this your first paper or are you, are you completed with anything else? Uh, in, no, sir. I okay. just completed. You just started. Five five okay, before. okay, great, great. Hey, that's, that's good to know. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. One second. <clears throat> just let me know when it's visible, okay? <clears throat> Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, let's begin. So when it comes to performance management, it's, you know, as the name suggests itself, it's just uh, learning how to manage the performance within an organization. Now, why exactly do we need to manage performance? This is so that the organization can achieve their objectives that they set out. So it depends upon different, uh, different organization as to what the objective is, but uh, you know, ultimately, we're just, you know, learning some concepts. You may have learned about the costing techniques. You may have learned about uh, as to the decision-making techniques, as well as uh, some performance measures as well. So all these things are used in order to manage the performance of the particular organization and help them achieve, uh, you know, the objective that they're set setting out to achieve. That's basically as to what the performance management paper is all about. So you need to consider, like, whatever questions can come up in the exam, you should always, uh, you know, focus on the performance aspect of it because this is this is an accounting or, uh, you know, audit or any taxation or any paper like that, right? So uh, the primary focus that we are focusing on here are two things. One is the performance related aspects. And then there is the, uh, there are some management related topics as well. Some of these might be covered in your graduation as well, such as, you know, uh, you may have learned about CVP analysis for, within your, uh, you know, BCom course, or, uh, you know, there are also certain, uh, if my memory is correct, there are also other uh, topics in relation to absorption costing, if my memory is correct, but yeah. So there are those things, there are those, you know, common topics. However, more and about that, we will also learn about more advanced stuff here as well, right? So uh that's basically as to what uh you know pm is if to give you a basic idea as to what the paper is all about 
And of course, uh, when it comes to the syllabus, I know you've already covered the entire sessions, but you know, just to run through everything real quick, uh, uh, you know, uh, just on a quick basis as well. So for first of all, uh, we have part A, right? And you know, I'll also be discussing as to you know how these syllabus areas can be tested in the exam tools at next as well. Okay, folks. So uh, when it comes to the part A. Part A is information technologies and system for organizational performance. So when it comes to this particular uh, syllabus area, it's like 100% theoretical, right? It's all just theory. But uh, let me just give you an idea here as well. In, when it comes to the PM ACC paper, you're not expected to like write the theory. For example, uh, as in, uh, let's say, let's take a topic, for example, uh, uh, in the in the first few sessions, you may have learned about a data analytics, right? Have you? Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to data analytics in the exam, they're not going to ask you what data analytics is or what are the uh, you know what are the features of data analytics. There won't be any direct questions like that. But uh, you know, if you have seen some of the questions, then you would understand that they're more of a you know a tricky kind of question. There is no direct question here. Most of them would be indirect. I'm saying most of them because maybe one or two easy questions can be tested in the exam, but that's just it. Uh, uh, the rest of it is like really tricky. And of course, uh, it's more of a practical nature than a direct theory question. Like, like they're not going to test your technical knowledge as to what you've learned from the books here. But more, uh, but rather what they would do is they would just test as to, uh, you know, uh, how you would use the knowledge in a practical scenario in your let's say, work environment as well. So that's basically something uh, that you have to keep in mind when it comes to ACC paper. I'm just saying this because you're just, you know, starting out uh, uh, in ACC, in your ACC journey as well. So yeah, just to give you that idea. So uh, this particular syllabus area is completely theory. There are no calculations here. You just have to understand, uh, you know, what information systems are, what data analytics is, what the type of uh, information systems are, et cetera. That's, that's basically all there is to it. Now. Moving on to the next aspect, we have part B, specialist cost and management accounting techniques. So when it comes to this particular syllabus area, it's like, you know, 50-50. Uh, there we have like 50% of calculations and 50% of it is like the theoretical aspects as well. Now, one really important thing, <clears throat> really important thing that you have to remember when it comes to the PM paper is that you have to understand the meaning behind numbers. I'll tell you uh, why I'm uh, emphasizing this particularly because it's not just about learning. This isn't a you know a maths paper in your uh, let's say uh, in, in a basic school exam or uh, or anything like that, right? Because uh, in let's say a mathematics subjects, it, it you might you know pass that particular paper by just learning some steps from some topics and some uh, you know method of calculating things, and that's basically it. But uh, this is a common misconception when it comes to the performance management paper. It's not a mathematical paper. It's like 50-50. It, it, there is 50 percentage of like calculation related questions. And of course, there would also be some theoretical questions as well. Theoretical as in, you know, uh, you will have to practically apply the theoretical knowledge in a scenario. That's basically it. So what you can do is, what you have to understand here is that in order to do the calculations, you don't necessarily, uh, you don't only have to like learn the steps and things like that, but you also have to understand the meaning behind the numbers. What does each number indicate or what exactly does a particular measure indicate for the organization? This is what is expected from you, right? So that's that's basically a really important thing to keep in mind here as well. So when, when we're talking about the calculation aspect, always remember that you have to have to understand uh, the meaning behind the numbers, not just the method of calculating things, right? So that's that's basically something that, uh, that I'd like to point out as well. And in part B, you will learn about a lot of costing techniques, which includes the traditional method of costing, that is absorption costing. Then there is activity-based costing. Then there is life cycle costing, environmental costing, target costing, et cetera, isn't it? So that's basically what you will be learning here. And then you have syllabus part C, where we will discuss about the decision-making techniques. So when it comes to decision-making techniques, it's just logical thinking. Now, logical thinking is a really key aspect when it comes to the performance aspect. You have to use your like common sense to a certain extent to understand the situation and 
take decisions appropriately. You might be, you know, it, it might be a scenario where you might be given, uh, you know, a choice to select uh, a particular contract to accept a particular contract or not. Now, in order to attract, in order to accept that particular contract, do you have the capabilities? Do you have the sufficient amount of raw materials to produce the output or things like that? All these things should be considered, right? So it's all just logical thinking. That's basically the key skill that you need when it comes to. Uh, not just this syllabus area, but I would say generically in every syllabus area as well. So yeah, just wanted to point that out. And the, and of course, uh, and of course, yeah, part C is where you could also expect, uh, you know, section C questions in the exam as well. Now in your exam, you will have three sections, section A, B, and C. And in section A and B, it will be completely MCQs. There would be uh, 60 marks worth of MCQs in your PM exam. And for the rest of the section C aspect, it's just a uh, case study question, right? So you will have to present your answer in spreadsheets or word processor, et cetera, depending upon the question. Now, so MCQs uh, or section A and section B are primarily tested as uh, MCQs, meaning that there won't be any section C questions or case study questions from the from these two syllabus area, right? Uh, uh, I hope you are still here with me, right? Can you just confirm that? Yes, sir. Okay. But uh, okay. sir, Thank I you. have a question. Then. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Sir, in I see in section A and B, there are two marks questions. Yeah. And uh, sir, uh, I have to uh, take the one option in it. And after I uh, write uh, the uh, story, some why this, uh, this is right. Oh, oh, you mean to say, uh, do you have to write how you calculated it? Is that what you, is that your question? Yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't have to say that. You just have to select the option in the exam, that's it. And uh, of course you would need to calculate things within, uh, let's say a piece of paper or within the, you know, th there's a, there's a uh, you know, what do you call it? Scrap paper or something? No, not a scrap paper, but there's a space within the CBE environment uh, where you, you can do your rough calculation. So we can utilize that to do it. But in your main answer, you don't necessarily have to show the method of calculating. You just have to select the right option. That's basically it for MCQs. Okay? Okay. okay. Now, uh, moving forward. So within uh, Part C, you will learn things like, uh, you know, CVP analysis. You will learn relevant costing techniques and things like that. And then, it com then we move on to Part D. Now, part C, D, and E are where you can expect scenario-based questions. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can only expect scenario-based questions. There can also be MCQs as well, but scenario-based or section C questions are primarily tested from uh, syllabus part C, D, and E, just to you know, give you that idea. Now, uh, part D is all about budgeting and control. Budgeting is basically like preparing a plan and uh, you know, performing activities in line with that plan and making sure that we are uh, you know, in line with what we have planned and there's no deviations or anything like that. That's basically as to what budgeting and control is all about, just to give you a basic idea. And of course, uh, yeah, this is yet again, uh, you know, another really important area as well, because uh, if you are planning to take like yet one portion of PM in the future, uh, you know, uh, budgeting and, you know, I would say, yeah, primarily budgeting and decision-making and the next few syllabus areas are really important for you to understand as well. And of course, it's yet again, all about logical thinking to a certain extent, and you should uh, understand the theoretical aspects of things here as well, because otherwise, you know, if you don't, if you don't do that, then it might be a bit tricky to uh, grasp this particular syllabus area. So always, always understand the theoretical, uh, you know, aspect behind each and every set of topics and each and every, uh, you know, numerical or calculation based topics as well. Now, uh, moving on to the next aspect, we have part E, performance measurement and control. And this is the final uh, syllabus area that, that I would say, uh, you know, or in other words, final technical based syllabus area that I would say, because uh, there are a lot of really important topics. And yet again, you can expect both MCQs in section A and section B, as well as case study questions from the syllabus areas as well. And when I say case study questions, uh, they, doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be uh, like, uh, you know, 100% calculation based question, it can also be theoretical questions as well. And that's what, you know, students face most difficulty and they face some, you know, they do, uh, you know, have some difficulty in uh, answering these theoretical questions. But, you know, once you, you know, uh, 
watch through all the you know uh, video question marathon uh, videos as well as once you once you're done with your your own practice as well you should be able to uh, you know tackle those in an easy manner as well there are a lot of you know tips and tricks communicated over there so you can just uh, you know have a look at that now uh, moving on to part f now part f is like uh, something that was introduced maybe uh, last year or so that's basically it so it's nothing it's just employability and technology skills and it's all it, there's no there's no technical knowledge to learn here uh, like in the other syllabus areas i would say that part a to e are the most important syllabus areas and part f is just an add on quality included in the syllabus just to ensure that you have the appropriate level of knowledge on things like excel or uh, you know excel as in you know how to manage a spreadsheet how to present your answer in the exam as well so that's basically as to what part f is all about nothing more nothing less that's 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 basically it and of course this is something that that we are covering when we practice the question within the cbe environment and you know things like that that's that's basically it <clears throat> now so that's basically all about the syllabus of performance management now moving on to the next aspect <clears throat> which is the exam structure now when it comes to the exam structure we know that it's a 3 hour exam right and uh, we have 15 mcqs in section a carrying two marks each that gives us a total of 30 marks isn't it and in section b you will have objective types questions where we have or as we call it otqs and we will have three otqs in section b so what is an otq otq is basically where you are given a scenario and five mcqs in relation to that scenario right so each otq will carry 10 marks each that will give us a total of another 30 marks isn't it so 60 marks will be scored in section A and B. Now, then we move on to the section C aspect. In section C, we have two CRQs or constructive response questions. Now, what are constructive response questions? These are basically the case study questions, which you may have seen when it comes to the question marathon or in your previous papers as well. That's, that's basically all there is to it. And as I mentioned before, it's not just calculation and I'm repeating it again and again, it's not just calculation. There will also be theoretical questions asked in the syllabus area or as asked in this uh, exam, uh, asked in section C as well. I hope so that's basically something that I want to convey as well. And each of the CRQs will carry 20 marks each, right? So that's basically, uh, uh, you know, two times 20, that is 40 marks from section uh, C alone, isn't it? So that's basically how the exam structure is. Now, so since we understood the exam structure, now let's understand how to you know go about this structure because time management is like a really important aspect when it comes to any exam, isn't it? So let's understand how the time allocation or the time strategy should be when it comes to the PM paper, shall we? So there is an ECCA uh, recommendation of uh, having 1.8 minutes per mark or you know adopting 1.8 minutes per mark as your basic time strategy. However, I feel that it's a bit too generous because there uh, you know uh, chances are that we might take even more than that. So a, uh, a conservative approach would be using 1.5 minutes per mark, right? So based on this approach, for section A and section B, you should try to finish it at a total of one hour and 40 minutes or maybe you know five minutes extra can be taken depending upon the questions that you have and depending upon you know the time that you would need to clear some tricky questions as well so yeah so maybe uh uh i'm gonna budget i'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna create a budget here of one hour and 40 minutes to complete the section a and b simple as that and now the next aspect is section c so for when it comes to section C, we have the 20 mark question, isn't it? So for each 20 mark question, I'm allocating time to two phases here. One is the reading and planning phase, and then there is the writing phase. So why exactly have I you know, provided a split here? This is basically so that you know uh, the most effective way to answer a particular question when it comes to an ECCA case study question is to first of all, read the requirement right that's like the first step that you need to take here uh and this is so that you can understand what exactly needs to be uh you know provided in your answer what exactly is the examiner expecting us to do so you have to understand that first of all and by uh you know 
In order to do that, you'll have to read the requirement first. Secondly, you have to read through the scenario as a whole to understand what the situation is, isn't it? So reading involves reading the, reading the requirement and the scenario. And then comes the planning aspect. Planning is basically just to create a structure in your head as to how your answer would look like, what are all the points that you're going to include, and uh, you know how can you score the full marks available. That's basically as the planning aspect of things. That's basically as to what you do in the planning aspect of things. So reading and planning. Read the requirement, read the scenario, plan the structure for your answer. And this should take around seven minutes for a 20 mark question, right? So this is basically the first aspect. And secondly, writing is easy, isn't it? So we, we can just, you know, once we have a structure in our mind, then it will be a bit more, we, we would be able to write a bit more quicker. Right? So 30 minutes should be taken to write your answer within the CBE environment. So this should be the time and location strategy. The reason why I'm telling you this now is because, you know, at, at this particular moment, you would be, you know, starting your question practice as well, isn't it? So please do continue uh, with that. And of course, while practicing questions, try to practice timed question within the CBE environment itself. Right by the CB environment, I don't necessarily mean the ACC practice platform itself, but you can also use, uh, you know, the Microsoft Ex Microsoft Excel or uh, Microsoft Word as well in order to practice the questions as well. Right. So that's basically something that I would highly advise to start practicing uh, questions using the time allocation and within the CBE environment as well. <clears throat> so do you have any questions with you regarding this or? Yeah, sir. In section C, I solved some question by myself, but mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. I can't solve it directly. Okay, so that could just be a lack of understanding of the question. So, is it is it in relation to any specific uh, topic or so? <clears throat> sir, it is some practical questions. I have a problem. So I can't even solve it. That's uh, no need to worry about that, Shruti, because, you know, initially it all happens. Like even my first time doing question, you know, even the first time that I did a question on PM or any of the ACC subject, I got it wrong as well. Like uh, initially my, you know, I may not even know what to write or I may not understand the scenario that, that happens. Like uh, that, that's exactly why we are practicing the question. So initially, Mistakes can happen, but with practice, it will gradually improve uh, on a step-by-step -step basis. But uh, but in order for that to happen, the uh, you know most important thing is to you know keep on practicing. So continue your practice, and of course, uh, you can you know if if that is your problem, then what you can do is you can try to answer it once again after reading the answer or something like that. Just just use that approach and try to do the same question once again to understand whether you've improved or whether you uh, need more practice or things like that, right? So that's that's basically something that I would advise. Initially, it happens, of course. We all make mistakes in the, for, uh, you know, whenever we are doing you know, something for the first time. So that that is kind of normal. Uh, and uh, with practice, it can be reduced. Like you might, let's say, get the first question wrong or the second question wrong and even the third question wrong. But the fourth time or the fifth time, what can, what's going to happen is you will gradually improve. Right. So that is exactly why I always advise the students to, you know, keep on practicing, uh, you know, till the day of your exam. There, there should be they should find even if they're working professional, they should find sufficient amount of time in order to you know, practice a great deal of questions. So it's completely normal. Just just keep on practicing once more. That's that's basically something that I would advise. And of course, if you are like stuck somewhere in a particular topic or in a, in a particular uh, or if you find a particular type of questions to be difficult, then of course we can uh, we can always discuss that, and you know I can find a solution for that as well, right? <clears throat> okay, sir. Okay, okay, great. Now, moving on. So this is basically the time and location. Just note it down somewhere if you want to, and start practicing. Uh, you know, of course, initially in the first two questions you might take more time than this. For example, it's like 37 questions, sorry, 37 minutes for a 20 mark question, isn't it? So you may take maybe an hour or even an hour and a half or even more than that. But with practice, it'll improve. I can, I can guarantee you that much, right? Okay. Now, moving on to the next aspect. <clears throat> 
So this is basically something that you might be waiting for as well, right? So how exactly can we prepare for the exam or what is the step-by-step uh, -step process for it? Let's understand that, right? So the first step is of course to learn the entire syllabus. And when I say the syllabus, I mean 100% of the syllabus. Do not skip any topics that you find a bit difficult. Do not ignore a particular calculation or a particular small topic or anything like that because uh, when it comes to the MCQs especially, anything can be tested from anywhere from the syllabus, right? So you have to be prepared for everything and therefore you will have to learn 100% of the syllabus. That's the first step. Secondly, you have to practice, practice, and practice. And I believe you already know the reason for that. I've just explained it, right? So initially, of course, uh, you know, uh, you might get things wrong and you might get some minor things wrong as you gradually uh, move on with your practice as well. But it's always, it's always great to, you know, have mistakes when you practice questions rather than in the exam, right? Which is exactly why you have to continue on practicing questions. If you, if you want to practice the same questions multiple times as well, there is a benefit to it as well, right? But yeah, try to cover the, uh, try to practice as much questions as possible from as much resources as possible as well. Uh, you don't just, you know, stick to the, uh, you know, revision question marathon alone. Uh, you can also purchase one of the, uh, you know, uh, exam kits such as the Kaplan exam kit or BPP or uh, if you find you know uh, questions from any other sources you can practice that as well so there's no limit to practicing just keep on practicing as much as you can utilize your time as much or devote your time to practice as much as you can till the day of your exam that's a really key point <clears throat> now after practice what I would suggest is of course, you will always have to, uh, you will definitely have to uh, practice the past paper questions as well of ACC because that will give you a better understanding of what kind of a quality of questions can be tested in the exam, isn't it? So it is essential, but I would advise start practicing these questions maybe a few, few weeks before the exam, right? Few weeks before the exam, not days, few weeks before the uh, exam, just to be, uh, you know, just so that you, get, you are ready to attempt that particular question and you would be able to assess uh, how prepared you are for the exam as well. So yeah, just just uh, I would prioritize the questions when, when it comes to question practice, I would prioritize the questions within the uh, question marathon, first of all, that's that's primary. And then you can practice questions from various other sources, uh, such as the Kaplan or BPP revision kits, and then move on to uh, move on to the question papers. <clears throat> now, moving on. Question papers are available within the ACC's websites itself. You can, you know, check that out. If you if you're unable to find it, just let me know. I can, you know, show you how to get there as well. Uh, any other questions, Ruthie, in, in this aspect? Because I see you unmuted. So, no, 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 sir. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah. Moving on to the next aspect, and this is a really key aspect that most students miss out on as well. So there is a resource known as the Examiner's Report. So what this report is is it's just an uh, I would say debrief of how the overall performance of a particular exam was. That's basically it. Uh, however, when it comes to this particular uh, report, you would be able to understand what the examiner's expectations are. And they've also provided some comments on things like how a strong candidate has performed in the exam, or what are the points that a strong candidate has demonstrated in the exam, what has the poor candidate done in the exam, or what could the candidate, exam candidate, do to improve their answers. All these things are provided in the examiner's report. And when it comes to the PM paper, uh, you know, two MCQs, which are like the most difficult MCQs, which was tested in the exam, will be published within this examiner's report. So it's a really, really useful resource. So I would suggest reading the examiner's report after attempting your respective past papers. We have a, we have a, a you know, examiner's report for each session. So uh, once you are done with the past paper of a particular session, read the examiner's report to understand. It'll give you a bit more insight into your own performance as well. So yeah, that's a really important aspect to include as part of your preparation. Now, moving on to the next aspect. You also have the mock exam as well. So when it comes to the mock exam, <clears throat> this is a really crucial step because, uh, you know, attempting a mock exam actually increases your chances of passing by 30%. Now, 
And why do I say that? Because a mock exam can give you an exam feeler. Like, uh, you know, you will be able to understand how the exam would be like, you know, how the actual exam would be like before you even attempt it, right? So that's basically, that can actually reduce your stress and, stress and pressure to a exam pressure to a certain extent. Uh, of course, you will still be nervous because it might be your first time attempting this exam, right? Yeah, of course, it's kind of natural. However, uh, by attempting a mock exam, you you should be able to you will you should you would be a bit more confident as well, uh, and of course we do provide like feedbacks on the uh, particular mock exams depending upon uh, you know uh, how soon you you complete the mock exam and send it to me because you know if it's too late then I would only be able to give you a generic feedback but uh, you know if you if you provide the mock exam at the time that I, uh, at the time that we communicated to you i should i would be able to provide you a specific very specific feed feedback for your own paper and of course i i i would be able to highlight the areas of improvement as well right so that's basically something that i would highly recommend please do attempt the mock exam and send it to me so that i can you know give you an appropriate appropriate feedback on your performance so that you can you know take the ne next step uh, appropriately as well <clears throat> so that's basically as to what the mock exam is all about. Yes, Ruthie? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I little bit scared because uh, they, mm -hmm. they, this is first time for me to give exam. This okay. is a CV based exam, right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. No worries. No worries. Because uh, you have already understood how the CBE environment works from one of the videos, right? As in, you know, there, there should be a video uh, regarding the CPE aspect. It's also, also available on, uh, like, you, uh, in our YouTube channel as well. You can check that out as well if you want to. But uh, as for the PM-specific instructions or PM-specific tips and tricks, that's already covered in the, uh, you know, video question management that is provided to you. So you can just, you know, refer to that. Uh, of course, it's, it's not that complex, I can tell you that. Uh, you can also, you know, have a look at the ACCA's practice platform available within the ACCA website as well. You can just uh, have a look at the ACCA's practice platform, or you can just, you know, Google it to access it as well. That's a bit more, you know, uh, easy way as well. So, yeah. Uh, so just check out what are the functionalities and you should be able to be good with that. As for the efficiency and things like that, typing speed is important. However, uh, you know, with practice, that, that is something that you improve with practice itself, So, which is exactly why I specifically told you to, you know, uh, practice questions within these Microsoft Word or Excel or even the uh, blank workspace available within the ACCA practice platform as well, right? So just, just have a look at that or, uh, you know, just, just practice questions over there so that you, can, you are a bit more comfortable with the platform itself. Because I do understand that this is your first time attempting a CBE exam. It, it, you know, there are a lot of uh, you know, uh, I would say you might have a lot of uh, expectations as to how it would be, but, uh, you know, once you practice these questions within the environment, it should be a bit more easier for you. It's not a big thing. I can tell you that it's, there's no complex top software or anything, uh, or it's not even, uh, uh the particular pla practice platform. We don't have all the functionalities that is available within the, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel within the CPE environment. It's just some basic functionalities that you need, the very basic functionalities that you need to present your answer. That's basically it. And as for how to present your answer and all those things, it's already communicated to you within the, uh, you know, uh, within the question marathon videos, isn't it? So just watch those and try to, try to you know, become comfortable with the uh, environment. That's something that I would suggest. <clears throat> right? Okay. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, this isn't the you know last time that we will be meeting. We will of course be meeting through various other uh, you know live sessions as well. There would be weekly live sessions. There was there would also be some more you know students joining in as well. Uh, so we would be discussing certain like relevant topics or key topics which you guys find difficult. And of course, uh, I believe I have a few students who have pointed out some topics to me. So I will be covering those. And of course, uh, we will also be, you know, we will also be practicing some, I'm also planning on practicing some live questions as well so that you can get get an understanding on how to think about it or what, the, what are the, you know, thinking aspect uh, when it comes to practicing these questions as well. So yeah, that that is something that we are planning and that would be conducted as well. So yeah, just to uh, give, you a, give you an insight. So yeah. 
and of course the final step is just to go write your exam that's basically it so just a step six step process and this is exactly what you will be uh, you what you would need to do right once you do each and every aspect of the steps you would be prepared for the exam to, so that you can you know go write your exam a bit more confident that's that's basically it so that's basically how to prepare and of course uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to plan for your upcoming exam so uh, let's understand how to plan for the uh, December session or how to make the timetable for that. So are you a you know person who usually follows or creates a timetable when it comes to a particular exam or are you just, you know, kind of, you know, go and uh, hope, are you someone who's like, yeah, are you someone who follows a schedule or something like that? If you can, you know, tell that, tell, tell me that. <clears throat> well, uh, actually I'm planning the things that on the day, I uh, what mm -hmm. to do? I I make a list on that, mm -hmm. uh, and I take on that uh, that uh, what I uh, done in a in a whole day. Okay. 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 Great. And uh, so the, and I and yeah. I give the reward that I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's actually something that even I do as well. So. Uh, what I used to do was I just, you know, go to some expensive, you know, place to eat. That's basically what I used to do as a, you know, a reward for myself. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, great. that's, that's really great to know. Uh, and let's plan for the December session, shall we? <clears throat> I believe your exam would be on the 7th. I haven't checked the timetable yet, but chances are it would be on a Wednesday. Uh, or I mean, let's assume the first week of December here. Now. Uh, when it comes to the December exam session, as of now, at this moment, you have two months to prepare, right? I'm not considering December here because that's that's like my, you know, uh, I will I will plan for that particular month. We don't have much of it, but, you know, there are like one or two days, but I will get into that. But as of now, let's focus on October and November, shall we? <clears throat> so how exactly are we creating the plan here or how should we what should we be doing in october and november so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do something really uh, interesting here but that's that's basically something that organizations do as well so what they do is uh, you may have learned some of the sort of topics as well right so what organizations do is they they always have an objective right a corporate objective that they need to achieve and in order to get to that objective, they may have some, you know, basic strategies, long-term strategies, short-term strategies, medium-term strategies, et cetera, isn't it? But I want you to focus on the methodology here. How are they planning things? They are planning things from the end, isn't it? It's like a backward looking kind of plan, isn't it? So, well, that's not necessarily a great name, but I'm still working on, you know, finding a really good word for that. But what we do is we set the objective and plan from there to the current uh, scenario, isn't it? So that's basically what we're gonna do over here as well. Our objective here is to attempt the exam in let's say the 7th of December. <clears throat> uh, Tuesday is usually taxation day, so yeah. Uh, yeah, 7th of December, that's basically the day that I'm planning, there we go. So if my exam is on the 7th of December, what I need to do is I need to plan from there. What would I do in the first, uh, few days that I have in December. Let's think about that first of all, shall we? <clears throat> in, in these days, I would primarily be focusing on things like doing past papers, as well as, uh, you know, reading the examiner's report. And of course, there are also uh, maybe, you know, practice some more you know, difficult questions that I noted while practicing my revision kits, etc. as well. That is basically what I will be doing over here. And of course, I will also be, I will always be, you know, using the day before the exam to conduct a thorough revision, isn't it? So this week, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to highlight it in another color. There we go. <clears throat> so during these weeks, what I would do is, I would conduct the raw revision of the syllabus. And of course, I would also, uh, you know, practice a lot of past paper and really difficult questions that I've identified throughout my overall preparation, right? That's basically as to what this week should be allocated to. Now, before this, now let's move on to the November month. On November, I will be, uh, you know, doing the other steps. That is, that there would be a day for a mock exam. For example, let's say 
I'm budgeting 20 for conducting the mock exam, but it will be communicated to you, but this is just to you know, give you an idea. 20 will be dedicated for my mock exam. And of course, from these for these weeks or for these days, I would yet again practice all my past papers available within, <coughs> sorry, the past papers available on the ACC's website, right? So that's basically what I'm allocating these days for. You can just write it down uh, somewhere regarding color coding. I'll just use a different color here. One second. There we go. These days are allocated for uh, question practice. So it all depends upon how many questions that you have and how many are you planning to practice as well, right? So yeah, just to give you an idea. And for the remaining days, uh, let's say for the month of November, since you're a full-time student, what I would do is I would just, uh, you know, practice a lot of questions during these days. This is basically uh, what I'll be allocating these days for. And if you haven't started the learning aspect, what I would suggest is I would, uh, I would use the entire October to learn the syllabus, right? Especially if you are a working professional, you may not have much time to devote uh, to your, uh, let's say, to your studies. For example, in weekdays, you may have like, what, uh, two or three hours max or even four hours max, uh, if that is possible. And of course, when it comes to weekends, you may have as much time as you have, isn't it? That's basically the case. Uh, so uh, for those people, learning might be a bit slow. So I would much rather take the entire October. If not, if you are, let's say, a full-time student, then what you could do is you could also, uh, you know, uh, chart for much less day. For example, you could, take, uh, you could take like 15 days to study the syllabus and maybe the rest of the days for practicing questions, right? So this is how you should plan. Start from the end. Start from the exam date and understand what all things that you need to do. We already discussed that, isn't it? It's already in that uh, slide that we just discussed. We have the six steps over here, learning the syllabus, practice, a uh, question practice. We should include all of these within the schedule that we're preparing. Of course, there would be some days in between. For example, you may have some, let's say, family commitment or a wedding to attend to or any, any other, uh, let's say, meetings or traveling, travel plans, etc. There could be anything. But chart for these days or consider these within your schedule and strictly follow the schedule till the day of your exam. That's basically something that I would uh, always, uh, always recommend uh, for my students. So yeah, just keep a plan. Just consider a plan, prepare a schedule for yourself. I've, I've given you a basic idea as to how to create this. So prepare the schedule for yourself and then follow it on a strict basis. That's basically it. So one particular thing that I'd like to include in, uh, in your schedule is that just free up some time. It could be uh, free up maybe one or two hours for uh, the PM live sessions on uh, the weekend, weekends. It's usually a Saturday. So I would free up, you know, some time every Saturday just to just to be on the safe side. There may not be some sessions in some of these days, but, uh, you know, this will be communicated to you if there is, uh, you know, uh, like an, a week before or so. So, uh, I, but still, I would just, uh, you know, always keep my uh, a slot open in the evening. It's usually from 3 to, you know, 6.30 around that time. So always keep a slot open for a PM live session. That's basically something that I would advise as well. So yeah, uh, so this is basically how you plan things. So Shruti, do you have any uh, questions here? No, sir, not that. Okay, okay, great. So uh, another thing that I'd like to add on when it comes to planning your schedule <laughs> is that you should consider two words here. One is planning. And the second is consistency, because there's no point in planning things if you're not, you know, consistently following it, right? So you strictly follow the schedule and you should always, you know, keep yourself motivated in order to achieve, uh, you know, that particular or, you know, to be in line with that particular schedule, right? So that's basically something that I would highly advise as well. Remember planning and consistency. So, yeah. So. That's basically it. That's basically uh, all I wanted to cover in this particular session. So do you have any other additional questions or concern? And so since you are like new to ACCA, do you have any other generic questions to ACC as well? You can, you know, feel free to ask me that as well. That's fine. And secondly, I uh, tell you that uh, I planned something and I didn't able mm -hmm. to do it uh, sometime. Mm -hmm. and okay. Okay. There is a little bit of demotivation. Demotivation, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually that's actually kind of normal. So, uh, see, but still, even if that happens, it, even don't just uh, you know. I would say 
I would advise don't get demotivated if you can't achieve, you know, the things that you've planned to its score. For example, sometimes it, it happens that there would be something unexpected that could happen, right? So uh, whenever such things happen, I would say, you know, just have a, either have a plan B for it or just, you know, let it happen and, you know, just, just follow that consistency. So th this is why I em emphasize the word consistency here. There should be consistency. For example, let's say that I plan to learn a particular, or I had a target of doing, let's say, uh, you know, uh, 10 or 20 questions in the next week. If that is the case, then uh, let's say that due to some unexpected error, two days were missed out. But don't get demotivated there. Just continue with the next few days that you have. Because once you get demotivated, there's a there's a you know drastic increase in inefficiency, right? You would you know you would just waste the time demotivated. You, there are two options here. You can either waste your time demo, you know staying demotivated, or at least get some progress out of it. Now, when it comes to these two choices, I would go with the latter, right? So that's basically the uh, you know way of thinking that you need here. And of course, it's always uh, you know it's always great to you know take a break when it happens as well. Just Maybe uh, you know one or two hours, just go out somewhere to a park or something, and then just relax and come back. And but still continue. That's basically it. Just just focus on an output oriented approach. That's something that I would advise. I hope that answers your uh, you know concern. You don't have any questions relating to ACC specifically because you know usually it's like uh, you know so someone who you know first of all you know who who's joining ACC for the first time will have a lot of questions regarding a lot of things. They may not even started out with the first paper, but they might inquire about things like the uh, you know BSc degree or things like that as well. So, do you have any other questions like that or? Uh, sir, I thought that I start my PER after clearing all the exams. Mm -hmm. But uh, my friends, one of my friends is starting earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that it should be right or wrong. I can't mm -hmm. be able to understand. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll I'll give you a little insight into that, right? So I basically started, uh, you know, working. Uh, I actually work in a, one of the big fours. So uh, <clears throat> I basically started working after my ECC as well. So during that time, there was, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that because of course, when you are working and learning, that's a, that's a really difficult process. I can tell you that because especially when you have, uh, when you have things like family responsibilities or any other, you know, uh, if you are like a party kind of guy, so uh, it's kind of really difficult to, you know, follow that particular, uh, you know, uh, follow or it's really difficult to balance your learnings with the uh, working hours that you have. So that's that's a really difficult thing to do, but not impossible. That's that's basically it. And I've seen a lot of students doing that as well. So uh, it is a great approach because it saves time to us. It saves your own time to a certain extent. But uh, if you if you prefer focusing on your studies first, then you can also follow that as well. But the only demerit that I've seen in that, or in uh, you know in practicing the or in just focusing on studies and then entering workplace is that first of all you are losing out on some time that's that's one thing but that's not that's not much of a problem to be honest uh, what what could you know what could be a bit demotivating is that after your studies and when you apply for a job there is a time gap and this time gap can be anything it depends upon the availability of job opportunities in the market. So for in my case, it took me like maybe, uh, you know, two months or so in order to find a, uh, you know, find a really good job in a, you know, in a big four or it's due to that timing as well, because big four usually hire, uh, you know, close to the year end when they need more people to do some procedures for the busy season. So <laughs> there is also that. Uh, uh, but yeah, the time gap is really demotivating because you have nothing to study, but uh, you know, and you have nothing to do as well. So that that was kind of really irritating for me. So that's one thing. So if you're not, if, if you won't get demotivated, uh, you know, with this particular time gap of completing your studies and entering a job, then you can, you know, uh, go ahead and do this. That's fine. Or else what I would suggest is try to complete at least, uh, let's say, 12 papers uh, first of all, just focus on that first of all. And after that, leave one paper and then, uh, you know, apply for a job or even nine papers as well. You can enter into a job even after completing nine papers, right? So you can, you know, do that as well. That's also a really good 
uh, you know, approach to save time and of course to focus on majority of your papers as well. <clears throat> But there's no, there's nothing wrong with you know carrying your or yeah, there's nothing wrong. There are much more benefits to you know balancing your working and work and you know study student life. That's 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 totally fine. And of course, focusing on studies alone and then focusing on work is also fine. There's nothing wrong with these two approaches. But it's just that you know I'm just pointing out some of the demerits for for one approach. That is, if you're fo only focusing on studies, then you know that time gap might uh, you know irritate you a bit. And of course, uh, uh, when it comes to balancing work, work and studies, then yet again, that's a really, really difficult process, really stressful, stressful process to a certain extent as well. So, yeah. but at the bright side, you will get some sort of, you know, if you enter into the right company, they may offer some sort of bonuses and stuff like that. But yeah, it's that's it's really conditional, and uh, I don't think it's worth worth it to be honest. So there's also that. Anyway, anyways, uh, let me. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Or do you have any other question to add on? Try to attend the next few sessions mandatorily. As I mentioned before, just always, you know, keep your uh, schedule open for a live session, right? Because I'll be I'll be discussing really important stuff there, such as topics, uh, complex topics, such as let's say transfer pricing or uh, regression analysis or things like that. And of course, I will also be practicing questions and communicating some more, you know, tips and give you more insights into the exam as well. So please do attend that, right? Okay. 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 All right then. Uh, thank you, and I will see you later in the next session. Bye. Thank you.